Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again, going on to exchange traded products. So that's exchange traded funds and exchange traded notes. Uh, talking about those, another pretty quick session uh, that we have. So we need to define the exchange traded product, we need to review the differences between the funds and the notes, and then describe the use for leveraged uh, ETPs. Typically we see those on um, ETFs rather than ETNs. So let's jump in here. So what are ETPs? Exchange traded products, they're a way to diversify holdings. So, you know, we all know that it's best to have a diversified portfolio. We, we mitigate risk by doing so. While we may still have systemic risk, we don't have individual company risk anymore. So uh, we can buy a fund. Because it's pretty difficult though. If you've got 20 names, they often say about 20 names is a really good level for a diversified portfolio. Um, but if I'm holding 20 names and I'm watching them and maybe I'm doing this based off a index and I've got to keep an eye on stocks that are leaving the index and coming in and rebalancing all the time, well, that can be hard work. So instead, I just go buy a fund. Um, now, in the past, we would do that through mutual funds uh, or 401k funds or things like that. Um, and they would do all that and they would do the, the managing trouble with that was you couldn't quickly get in and out and it wasn't as liquid and there was vesting periods and all of that sort of stuff. So instead of all of that, um, basically the mutual funds have essentially been replaced by exchange traded funds and the market is huge. So uh, this was as of March uh, 2018, we're talking about 2.8 trillion um, in um, NYSC ARCA, and then we've got some in NASDAQ and some in BATS um, as well. But you can see that we're talking about $3.4 trillion assets under management in US ETFs alone. Uh, so it is a massive thing. And I think after 2008, a lot of people just said, you know what, I'm over active management, I just wanna do passive management. Where it becomes difficult for technical analysis is that um, the fundamental structure of an ETF can change based on the rules of that ETF. Now, index ETFs, you know, an ETF on the healthcare sector, uh, the spiders, etc. Um, that's pretty easy. The, the, the underlying structure is not going to change. But if I'm doing a high beta um, ETF, well, the structure can change because high beta in one market, in a bear market, um, may be consumer discretionary, and that's a negative beta. Um, or, you know, when we get into a different phase of the market, it may be industrial stocks. So that high beta that's looking and saying, right, we just want to rebalance and bring in high beta stocks, the underlying structure changes a lot. So you've just got to be really aware of that if you are trading and doing analysis on ETF charts, what's the structure, what's going on underneath? Um, so again, just, just be really careful of that. I like ETFs more as a alternative vehicle when I know what's happening with the underlying market. Uh, so just, just again, keep an eye on that. Uh, replace mutual funds as the investment of choice for simple diversification. The most common ETPs are ETFs. ETFs are essentially mutual funds that are traded on exchanges. So why ETPs? Why would we use them? Gain exposure to themes, sectors, countries, without having to do excessive research on individual names in that country uh, or region or something like that. Uh, invest in markets which you wouldn't, poss wouldn't otherwise have ac um, access to. Uh, so that's the other reason why we want to do that. Uh, automated tracking of the index um, as well. So just, we want to have an S&P 500 investment, well we can do that straight with the um, uh, ETF. So the other ways of doing that would be to buy a portfolio of 500 names and make sure that you're rebalancing continuously like the index does, taking out the futures with all the leverage risk, or get an ETF of the spider, uh, the SPY. Uh, you know, you can do that as well. Uh, automated tracking of the index, uh, there's a really important thing to note though when it comes to international ETFs. So we can go to the US and there'll be an ETF on, let's say, Indonesia. And when uh, basically the ETF is saying, we really think that Indonesian stocks are going to go up. But the problem is that that ETF is priced in US dollars and your investment is in US dollars. 
Now, if you're investing in an Indonesian ETF, I'm just using that as an example, I'm not sure if there is one or not, uh, and then the price of the Indonesian stock market goes up, but the general economy has also gone up, so the Indonesian currency goes up uh, at the same time. Well, you may not get the same returns. So sometimes you may get better returns because of the currency fluctuation, sometimes you may not. It's just really important to be aware that even though you feel Indonesia is gonna go up, so this ETF is a good buy, you've gotta factor in the currency side to that as well. Very, very important. And it may be that your feeling is that from a US perspective, we think Indonesia is a good buy, but even though in Indonesia, it may not be such a great thing that's going on. Just be aware of that, um, that FX interplay as well. So a couple of types of ETFs, we have index ETFs, commodity ETFs, inverse ETFs, we'll talk more about those as, um, later. That's the way that we can get exposure to a short um, uh, ETF if you like. Actively managed, where there's actually a manager who is making those decisions about what's in and what's out. Um, then you've got you know, the passive ones, uh, et cetera. And that's more like the index ones. Uh, industry, they, they're just focusing on an industry, let's say marijuana, uh, something like that. You can get ETFs on that. Foreign markets, designed to track non-US markets. Um, bonds, so you can buy, have ETFs which are buying bonds, et cetera. Well, more like ETNs then. Um, style, large cap, small cap. Um, you know, high risk, low risk, that type of thing. Uh, exchange traded notes uh, as well. We'll talk about those in a moment. So ETFs versus ETNs, uh, the difference is in what the investor actually owns. So within an ETF is a basket of shares. So by having an ownership in an ETF, um, the ETF has, or the fund, has ownership in the underlying shares, and you get all the benefits of actually owning a portion of that company as well. It's just that the ETF is managing that whole process for you. ETNs are structured products which are issued as senior debt notes. Now, senior meaning in the liquidation event, they're paid out you know, with other bonds, etc. cetera. Um, so it's a similar to an unsecured loan. Uh, but you can go and you can buy an ETN, you get the fixed income aspect of it, uh, and all the benefits that a bond has. So there can be some diversification between ETFs and ETNs. The holder of an ETN owns a share in a bond backed by those assets. Uh, and you can see examples there. So then we get into leveraged ETFs. Now leveraged ETFs, what we're talking about with um, inversing as well. Um, I think I talk about inversing here, yeah I do. So leveraging and inversing. So you, we can only buy um, an ETF. We can't short sell ETFs, at least not at this stage. Won't be surprised when that comes available. Um, what if we have a bearish sentiment about these um, S&P 500? Well, you can buy a inverse SPY. Uh, and then there's also these leveraged ETFs. Uh, which are quite dangerous, hence the image which talks, which, uh, you know, is a play on the Vegas sign. Um, so basically what ETF sponsors are doing is they're saying, right, we have the ETF, let's create a leveraged ETF that pays twice the amount. So if the um, SPY goes up um, by 1%, we're going to pay out 2%. Uh, but if it goes down 1%, then they lose 2%. It's really, I, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I really get the feeling that these leveraged ETFs are doing nothing more than playing on the fact that 90% of speculators lose in the market, uh, especially short term. And you really wouldn't want to do leveraged ones for a long term investment. Uh, it just does not make sense, uh, the risk that's involved in them. Um, so you know, the real issue with these leveraged ETFs is they decay over time. You see, when, um, you know, market goes, let's say we start at 1,000, it goes down 10% to $900, then goes up 10%, well, then it goes to 990. And so we're, we've got this $10 decay that happened. Uh, always really important to remember that. Well, when you've got leveraged, that decay is much, much bigger. And so if it's a sideways market going up 10%, down 10%, up 10%, down 10%, you know, then your, your value is going to decay very quickly. Uh, so very important to watch out for that um, as well. 
Then we have REITs is the final one here. Uh, they're real, inv real estate investment trusts. They uh, basically represent a stake um, in a portfolio of properties, income producing properties. So they're a fund which goes and buys property and brings all of that together. They can be bought and sold like every other exchange traded product. The difference is in the way that their tax treatment is um, handled. So you do have to be uh, aware of that. But essentially from our perspective, from a TA perspective, um, it's exactly the same. All right, so a nice quick one there, exchange traded products, uh, defining what they are, uh, that they're, they're funds of securities or debt, you know, the difference between ETFs and ETNs, and then the use for leveraged ETNs uh, as a highly speculative uh, instrument that people can trade with as well. All right, we'll continue on uh, with the next section, which is foreign exchange. Thank you.